You know, Shelby Steele, he also has embraced, I mean, really embraced this whole notion of critical race theory, not racial equality, but racial equity. He talks the talk of the radical Marxist left. And he not only talks it, he's surrounded by these people, and he's signing executive orders, and he's issuing fiats that are instituting the most radical forms of racial discrimination. Um, what do you make of that? This, Mark, I think goes back to the 60s. Um, in the 60s, America, for the very first time, really, um, in, 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 because it was such a, the focus was so much on civil rights and, and transforming America into a racially, to racial equality and so forth, uh, that in that, in that era, for the first time, America felt an obligation to social morality. You had to have a sense that, that God's hand uh, was involved in social relations and fighting racism and so forth. And so in many ways, the 60s added uh, this, this idea of social morality to our culture. Um, and it transformed the whole racial issue in America into something of a morality play. Um, a, a play of guilt and against innocence. And we are still in that. Uh, and in that, in that uh, format, um, guilt is, uh, is, of course, what, what uh, America is supposed to, specifically whites, America is supposed to feel toward uh, its past. What happened in America over the last 60 years is we have made innocence a racism. We've confused that with actual racial reform, which would involve the development of black people. Instead, we focus on proving our innocence. So we end up with political correctness. We end up with virtue signaling, which, which Mr. Biden is, is expert at and, and the left is, is expert at. Uh, they're always sig signaling their, their virtue. Critical race theory is simply a, a signal of innocence. We are so innocent of racism, uh, we, we, are, we, are, uh, we, we practice this, this political, this uh, uh, form of, of political correctness, uh, critical race theory. Well, I think this, this whole uh, confusion of social reform with morality is what has, has created the power that the left has. So the left simply goes around and says to everybody, you're immoral, you're immoral. You're a racist, you're a racist, you're a racist. Uh, you're a sexist, you're a sexist, you're a sexist. You're evil. You are associated with America's evil past. We, on the other hand, are innocent. We uh, want to redeem America. We want to put it back together again, supersede uh, all of these things. And so, and so we create a vocabulary, critical race theory, intersectionality, diversity, so forth, that, is, that stands for the good, that stands for innocence of America's racial sins in the past. And we impose that, that vocabulary on every institution in American life. Long ago, education was taken over by that language. Uh, today, corporations are taken over by that language. Uh, by the, again, these, this, this pursuit of innocence, of displaying innocence, claiming innocence. And it, is, it brings enormous power. It is, it is the power of the American left, the central mm -hmm. bearing of that, so that people can be on the left and feel that they are more decent than people who are on the right. Conservatives, uh, on the other hand, are seen as, again, allied with that old American evil. Uh, they're, all, they're just really wanting to go back to the days of the Klan and, and that sort of thing. Um, and you, you see that in the, the democratic leadership. Again, you, you constantly referring to the right in, in references to the Klan and white supremacy uh, and, and so forth. So this is no idle thing. The, the Democratic Party, the American left, has taken, has, has fashioned this tremendous source of power, this moral, uh, this capacity for moral judgment. 